Stars, it is I, Tanya, from House of Tanya, unburdened by the moderators of the TikTok shop. I'm coming to you live to talk business. Yes, our friend Mr. Ryan Murphy has given us the gift of something to watch. Have you seen it? I've only seen one episode, Grotesquerie on FX. Have you seen it? Oh my goodness. I think this is something for me. If you are a K Scarpetta fan, if you are a Law and Order fan, if you are, listen to me, a DCI Jean Tennyson fan, grotesquerie, right? You don't, you don't want to see the the simple mystery story you're tired of the hour long drama procedural if you like a little horror movie right halloween is coming if you didn't mind niecy nash in rookie feds grotesquerie might be for you that's all i'll say <laughs> put a one in the chat if you've watched Either the promo or one episode of Grotesquerie with Niecy Nash. I watched the first episode twice. I quite enjoyed it. Welcome user 1636, Georgia Peach, Donna Gray, CC, CEC11, Virtual Asylum. Did you know that Grotesquerie was shot on location at a California asylum? Scary... Um, Barry Moak is here, Barry Moak 1, Whitney M, Terry Ann, Lemel 64, <laughs> wait, um, yeah, you know, it's been a little dry, Monique Wright, Mar Maria Norton 86, Lily is here, Elvira, Allure by Ugishia, welcome, Kai, Ashley B., um, if you've been following Royal Drama with me, you know there hasn't been a lot of update. There hasn't been a lot. There's been a lot of repeat photos, a lot of repeat stories, a lot of stories where you really can't be sure that what you're being told in a whole long page of an article has any factual basis, right? The latest is Kate Middleton was supposed to have gone to the ballet. No pictures. Huh? And they keep posting these stories about Kate Middleton has gone to the church in Scotland, but it's the same old pictures, the same outfit, the same feathered hat from 2023. Like, is this her church uniform or are they pulling our leg again, collectively? That's what I'm trying to say. But... Salva Bote is here, Terry Yandel, Jackie D, don't worry, be happy. Edinson Ochoa, hola. Host Josie Fears, sorry. Britt, Avery Colnight, Yvonne Martinez, and lo Loyal to You 420. Oh, <laughs> Ruby Carrillo 3, Chrissy Elena, Kelly Wilson, Mouse is here, Alni, and I think we're all caught up. Brandar King, MDD, Maudina Bartellamy, welcome. But another thing, if you're someone who, you know, if you're a Catholic, if you are someone who has any kind of relationship, strained, anti, or in favor of religion, this grotesquerie show may be for you as well. One of the interesting things that was discussed in the script was the notion that, hear this, right, grotesquerie, Ryan Murphy a lot of really interesting, surprising executive producers, including Max Winkler, who is the son of the Fonz. Yes, he's directing and he's blonde. Anyway, that cults, now hear this, right? We're in an, we're in an election year with certain kind of cult operating in the political space. Cults are replacing traditional places of worship and the whole good and evil back and forth is happening 
in relationship to cults, right? That a lot of people used to think of the church, right? The old, is it the Old Testament Bible or the New Testament? I guess it would be the New Testament Bible talks about the church as a place of justice and refuge. And we've certainly lost sense of that with the whole discussion of prosperity, Christianity, you know, that kind of like television evangelical stuff, which I quite enjoy, right? A lot of my family is from the South. And, you know, that whole cadence, right? That's where Chris Rock is supposed to have gotten his comedy performance cadence from, just listening to Black preachers. And, you know, it certainly is part of our culture. I think that's why <laughs> the Robinson character, is he in North Carolina acting up? So crazy. Lisa is here. Noriel, M, Florence Epiphany. Um, but let me know if you have watched any episodes of Grotesquery because I was quite excited. Beatrice too. Corinthians, Mama, Jod, Jod, Ja Edar Zoman 6. I hope I pronounced that right. User 8696. It's Vinterez, I think. <laughs> May Oscar. House of Gabrielle, welcome. Steph Stephanie, 145, my Odina Bartolome, I think I'm all caught up, yeah? But, you know, it's interesting for there to be a show, right? We're used to things like Rosemary's Baby, right? I think Channing Tatum, who personally, I believe, has long been destined to be a bigger star, forgive me, than Leonardo DiCaprio, the acting, the dancing, the looks. And now he has his like grown man vibe going. You know, he's in this kind of dark film that was written and directed by Zoe Kravitz, but he was saying to Kelly Clarkson that they watched Rosemary's Baby on their first date. Mm. So, you know, if you're a fan of Ryan Murphy in terms of American Horror Story, in terms of Dahmer, right, which is where we saw Niecy Nash get at it, and I think she got the Emmy for that. If you are a fan of, you know, I feel like Ryan Murphy does like comedy, and he does horror, and he does kind of classic Hollywood, like he did that project on Netflix called Hollywood, so there's always an appetite for darkness and humor, but grotesquerie is serious, serious, serious. I think it evokes all that texture of um, True Detective 1, Rosemary's Baby, The Omen, what is it called? Hannibal, the TV series. Um, you know, these sort of like mm, spiritually twisted criminals right and the the story is just starting your friend travis kelsey is in the series your friend courtney vance is in the series and you know just a lot of really juicy um acting i'm not gonna try to give away spoilers but again i thought that part about cults replacing traditional houses of worship when it comes to the fight between good and evil and we're certainly seeing that in our current presidential election and just the notion of the church having been a place of justice and refuge and how that has perhaps changed because using the church, using people's will to believe to kind of manipulate them into this kind of behavior or that kind of behavior, I feel like there's going to be some juicy commentary in this series. Um, there's, you know, there's a few interesting things going on. Another interesting quote from the script. It, I, what, what's exciting about this series, it's like, it seems like it was well and thoughtfully written, not just to give you exposition, like this is the dead body or whatever. It is more like thoughtful. So one of the characters at one point says, but the way the world is going with I can't read my own writing with <laughs> with bad news. Is that what it says? But the way the world is going with bad news and cataclysms at every turn 
everything now feels personal to everyone, right? It's like sometimes you just can't take it. How much, you know, natural disaster and weird crime and whatnot is going on. But I think this series presents, it's not just sort of exploiting it to be dark. It's more kind of thinking about, you know, what do these crimes mean? Do they mean something spiritual? Do they mean, you know, at, at, at its core, it has to mean a, a, a disregard for the sanctity of human life, right? And we know that the sanctity of human life is not absolute because we see it play out in everyday life, right? Martina Mills has joined us. Juana La Santa, zero. Welcome. Purple725 is here. Um, Anastasia is here. <laughs> Anthony De Los Martin, Maria, Shirley, Gabby. Call me Mrs. Bly, Bill Ben 875, Desiree, Dexter Burton, King Yasin Blackstar, welcome, Brian Rex 5, Sue Ramsdell, welcome, Carla.com, Susan Planet Moon Heart, Diane M3209, User Gaudi. But, you know, it's been a while because I've tried to start watching Ryan Murphy's other series, Monsters, because I really like. Nick Chavez, the actor, I really like. Um, Javier Bardem, I don't mind. Chloe Savini, how do you pronounce her last name? I'm not sure. But, you know, it looks exciting. I've certainly seen clips and different discussions, but every time I start trying to watch it, that extended scene in the limo, I can't. I can't. I'm not in the mood. I don't want to hear. It just doesn't. I got to move past that scene to be able to dig in and, and see what the take turns out to be. Because some people are saying that um, Monsters doesn't exactly reflect what the brothers themselves may have wanted to be portrayed about their situation and their case. I don't know. But certainly there's been clips on here talking about, you know, early male pattern baldness in one of the brothers and how that was you know kind of used as a, a pivot for the mother character to try to humiliate her son right and you know and I think that's what's monstrous or seems to be monstrous about that series that the whole idea of how people who know you intimately and are supposed to love you right like kind of like ordinary people that film with I guess it's Ellen Alda and who's the woman that played Mary Tyler Moore? Oh, I can't think of her name. You know who I'm talking about. But it was like one of those films about, you know, kind of the difficulty of marriage and family life in America. So, you know, I think I came to Monsters expecting, <laughs> you know, certain information to be put in the forefront and it wasn't um guzzy 37 is here seasonify shop is here maggie rick woke lulu 1998 tia pm martina mills what it do let me make sure to show my sign we're live y'all oh i probably need to flip my screen so you can read it mm-hmm live can you see that live you can barely see it i'm playing with my lighting setup but in any case i'm very excited about this series grotesquerie because it seems like there's a lot of juiciness that's going to come and that it's going to you know make a statement about you know certain dynamics that we are living with in what can certainly be a culture where there's crime and homelessness and all those dynamics get presented so far in the series, right? That Nisi Nash's character is trying to, you know, just get around in town and people are approaching her vehicle and intimidating her. And so she has to, you know, turn on the bubble lights and, uh, you know, kind of back people up off of her. And that, it's unfortunate, but that is a lot of what we end up having to do 
in society, right? People want to make assumptions about us and we got to let them know. Oh no, <laughs> my attempt to do some contour is getting away from me. But in any case, right? There's certain con concepts that come from the Bible that are being discussed in the crime part of the story, right? I feel like Grotesquerie presents a world, a small town world, a world where a strong, full-grown black woman is the is a police officer, or at least a detective. I don't know if she's the chief. No one calls her chief, but it's a small town. And crimes happen, and of course, as we know, she has to figure it out. And, you know, there's people trying to give her the Miss Ma'am treatment and run her off, and it's too, it's too grotesque. It's too scary. She should just hand it off to the FBI, and of course, she's not going for it. And... You know, if you are, as I am, a big fan of Detective Jane Tennyson and the Prime Suspect series, the UK version, not the American version, then you'll kind of see the, you know, people trying to give her the little lady treatment and she has to like be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't trust these. At one point she says, I don't trust these guys in the force to give this, you know, crime the justice it deserves and I think we all we all often work with people who don't give us any sense of um confidence about how much they can help figure out any situation right like there's just there's all kinds of people who have jobs for all kinds of reasons other than doing the work and it seems, if nothing else, like Nisi Nash's character is there to get the work done. And we love to see it, right? This is a moment in the United States where we're definitely developing an appetite for competency, no matter the gender. And competency and a passion to do your job well, no matter the ethnic heritage, right? We're getting way past the point, And it's way past time where we get down to business and we're not, you know, allowing people to play identity politics in a way that does not serve justice or the truth. Mm. This grotesquerie has gotten me thinking in all kinds of different directions. And I, you know, I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely watched it twice so that I could talk about it. And I love the fact that there are juicy performances you know there's a, a way in which the scripting was done to allow room for more female leads in a way it could be that you know Nisi Nash on her own her character is piecing together the, the the crime puzzle but they've created a situation in which a religious woman kind of steps on the scene and is providing exposition and insights to Nisi Nash. And that's certainly very delicious, right? Giving a religious woman for a change, a very active role and a very, um, you know, specific kind of insight. I feel like we don't always see that. I think that the stereotypical way to see, um, you know, women in crime stories that involve religion, it's always not necessarily driving the story. So, you know, I feel like for a long time, Ryan Murphy has made it clear that he likes and respects women. He likes and respects older actresses. He likes and respects younger actresses. And it's not a situation where, you know, those old dumb cliches about women fighting at the sight of blood, that is the one that drives me bananas. How? Past the age of 10, 12, or 13, can a grown woman faint at the side of blood? Come on. Men are more likely to do that than women. Let's be real. It's a very interesting time to be alive and watching FX and its latest Ryan Murphy program. I was very excited to see, you know, just a, a different take and a different evolution of lady crime fighter 
black woman with a black family. She seems to have a grown daughter and a husband who's in a, a little bit of a medical situation. Um, the series is moody, it's dark, it is thriller and horror. And I think the thing that makes it thriller is of course, there's a crime and a pretty devastating crime and not the only crime, I think. But then there's also an aspect to grotesquerie that is spiritual, religious, and a little bit twisted. You know, like how, like, what is it, Nightmare on Elm Street, the criminal was supposed to have been the son of a nun who was essayed by a thousand maniacs. Is that right? And that, that made this sort of, like, criminal, villain nemesis take on like a spiritual um identity kind of like the devil or a demon or something like that and he you know was certainly very relentless in coming to his victims in their dreams and all of that so you know this series doesn't work exactly like that but it definitely has some you know juicy handles that seem like it's going to be an interesting setup that is going to pay off in an interesting way. And I couldn't be more excited about the cast. Can Travis Kelsey act? Or is he, he just a big old good looking guy that happens to be spending time with our favorite, Taylor Swift, right? Or is he just, you know, somebody who was, what is the word nepotism? That somebody called somebody and got him an acting job. We gonna we see. You know, I think that the project probably has been considerate and not giving him too much for him to handle, you know, at his level in terms of, you know, his level of practice and technique performing, you know, certain story ideas. But I'm still excited to see it, whatever, whatever it is, however it turns out but we know we've got veterans on the scene we've got Courtney Vance who is a Yale educated veteran of film and he's also married to oh Adrian Reddick's in the house thank you for that um he he's married to Angela Bassett and they have two children thank you thank you thank you have you watched Grotesquery, Adrian? I um I watched the first episode and I'm I'm kind of giving my talk through. Not exactly a play by play review because Yay! Um you know, I just wanted to get into some some ideas and issues that it raised for me because I you know, I hunt around. I don't have all the time in the world to watch. Thank you. I don't have all the time in the world to like watch every episode of everything. If it's not good, I'm always like, oh, I'll get back to that later. But it was, you know, if you like the slightly Adrian, if you like the slightly, if you like an intelligently written thriller with horror elements, like kind of twisted criminal, maybe a little bit spiritual, demonic, religious this might be for you. And the acting is on point. Um, it's shot in a very cinematic way. And the story craft was on point in a way where you're not going to like roll your eyes and feel like, oh, this is something dumb or this scene goes on too long. It's very efficient. Like the show Preacher. I don't know. I haven't watched that. Is Preacher the one with John Berenthal? Am I thinking of the right project? Or am I thinking of Punisher? Maybe who's in Preacher? I can't remember. But look at me, Adrian. I'm doing a live and I'm not trying to sell anything because last time I got in trouble, the, the hall monitors of the live were like, you can only talk about products. And it's like, I'm a real, I'm a well-rounded person. I have things to talk about that aren't just, you know, like I think of live as like something with commercial breaks. They think of live as like, you're only supposed to talk about, you know, products and whatever. So here I am breaking free, 
talking about grotesquery. I can't say that it's my new favorite show, but I watched the whole thing. And let me, let, you want to guess how often that happens? That I don't get distracted and end up doing something else? Hmm. Oh, John Barenthal was, hmm. I think he was killed off in, what is that show with the zombies? They shoot it in Georgia. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Dead, Walking Dead, maybe? Maybe. But people were talking about, like, they were sad that his character got killed off. But he's a good actor. He did the, did you see the recent reboot of um, American Gigolo? He was the main character in that. He also tried to, um, you know, put the paws on Emily Blunt in Sicario. And then Benicio Del Toro had to come along and stop him. <laughs> you know his face. Um, and he's actually a nice man. Um, but maybe. Is there a Walking Dead that has like three letters? The something of the dead? Or is there a, what do you call it? When there's a sequel series? Something of the dead? I don't really know. A lot of people like those kinds of shows, but you know, I, I can't really like spend a lot of time like and that that doesn't get me. But this this show, this script, it had it had a lot of things for me, you know, principally to have watched Nisi Nash go from, you know, doing what was that cop show that was like comedy where they were like wearing short shorts. Um can't think of what it was called. Um, Reno 911, right? To Claws, to The Soul Man. She did with Cedric the Entertainer. And then, you know, she's done a lot of different things and as main cast, right? And her personal life evolved, but she, you know, got on rookie feds and I thought she did a really good job and it, it was a, a, a show with a black lead. So she had a black family. She had her dad. She had her, you know, personal dating life on the show. But, you know, one thing that kind of bothered me was how many people, there's a lot of people on Facebook who talk a lot of ish about cast members, right? On The Rookie, they're always ragging on the people dating the main character, Nolan. Oh, they're never satisfied. They hate this one. They hate that one. They prefer this one. They prefer that one. And it's to the point of being abusive, right? And the same thing with General Hospital. Oh, they hate this person. They should fire that person and only hire their favorites and get rid of the others. That's the way it happens to shake out. You know, for a long time, people were posting the show right they would tape the show but they would cut out all the and only show these characters and their storyline so it was like where's the rest of the show but thankfully the producers of general hospital don't play that and if you know then you know the guy that's the lead brother in monsters nick chavez came from general hospital and had a black girlfriend dark-skinned texan black woman actress on general hospital and not only is he in brian murphy's monsters but he's also in grotesquerie but we haven't seen him yet trixie b is here wait what's a new level of fandom huh uh, but yeah, anyone who's watching, please let me know if you've watched Grotesquery. Yes, Reno 911. I, you know, I've seen clips of it. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, but I'm not a, oh, I'm going to sit and watch. Oh, well, but are they the Facebook groupies? Like, we got to be discerning, Adrian. It's like being on this app. To all the people who want to be attacking you in your on your posts, making all those comments, you can't assume they're real people. Sometimes it's about, you know, a certain, a certain actor was recently let go. I understand on one of these shows, right? They, they said, oh, you know, budget, would you take a pay cut? And she said, no. So they wrote her off. They wrote her, you know, she gonna, 
sleep with the fishes, right? That's it, right? Unless it's like that soap opera, like you were unalive, but not really. Now it was a mistake and you're back. It seems like the producer's expectation, again, according to the internet, was that she would play along just to stay on the show. Sometimes your story kind of becomes not the A story, but like a B or a C, like you're there in the universe, but it's not about you anymore, right? But the answer to the cut in the money was no. And I don't know how often that happens or if anyone ever goes along with that, but the word on the street is that the actress said, mm -mm, give me all my money. And they were like, oh, well, thank you very much. Have a nice life. <laughs> so all of that is playing out now, right? Sometimes the fans that come on and attack and claim that they should cut all the characters who are of color to keep their favorite characters on the show, in my opinion, they're not real people. They're people that were hired, you know, bought farm, bought all that to pursue a certain, you know, line of what do you, whatever you call it. Like, I don't know if you get this on your posts, like people just leaving like 50, 100 comments in the space of like an hour or a day, right? When I do royal content, sometimes it's just so bananas because you're like, who are these people? Do they not have a job? Like I could see leaving a comment when you're like sitting on the toilet or something, but the way these commenters comment let you know it's not a normal person. And you know, as much as we've seen people say like Kensington Palace hires bot farms to attack Harry and Meghan, to attack their supporters, I could see you know, an actor or their representatives deciding, well, well, let's whip something up in the internet, right? It's different than fans writing, you know, having a petition to keep a certain show on the air or keep a certain character on the air. It's not that, it's comments and attacks and, you know, suggesting that the producer should swap out their favorite, again, their favorite for the others. But if you watch the show, you see that the others are much more critical to where the story is heading, right? Um, you never had negativity on here. Just you wait. Techno Pirate is in the house. Um, but, you know, again, like those, I would love to, I would love it if they were sincere and real groupies with strong opinions. But, you know, it was ad hominem, like personal attacks on Nisi and Nisi's body and how they would dress her on the show. Like myself, Nisi is blessed and all these people seem to have like a real problem with the fact that she would wear a jacket and you'd see any of this and I'm like they don't have that problem with Mariska Hargitay she's in a high neck she's in a low neck she's in a you know dinner party or a gala outfit nobody complains but and I'm a casual reader of all this it's like whenever I'm you know on the exercise bike or looking at Facebook, which is not all the time, but it was outrageous and abusive, I felt, the way that people were attacking her physically, as if to say that she shouldn't be on her own show. Like, she's the lead. She's a producer, right? An executive producer of the show. But, you know, I feel like some other characters on The Rookie in particular get attacked because certain watchers don't like them or somebody is out there trying to like make it seem like oh the fans really hate so and so or would prefer that you know the Nolan character have a different girlfriend or you know something like that like trying to advocate for what they want it's like when people in the Marvel fandom get so like bent out of shape that the casting for this character who is of color in the books is not or is of color like that whole debate where it's like yeah I mean you can have your opinion but it's I think it's a different thing to actually be on social media attacking people and attacking their bodies and 
dismissing people. Hello, friend whose name is Russian. Um, Patricia Schneid, 336 is here. Missy, one, Missy, 1999, seven is here. Sila, um, Mary Hannah, 420. And yeah, the negativity, you know, it, it, it varies. Sometimes you'll leave a comment and people will attack you and say you're so dumb and you know it just depends on my mood like I commented on something um it was some video of uh who's that kid that was Orlando Orlando Brown he was on one of the Disney series I think he was on That's So Raven and he you know has been playing kind of kooky for years and someone was explaining he's probably playing that way so that he doesn't get targeted for, quote, knowing too much, you know, Diddy stuff and that kind of thing. And it's an interesting strategy, but, you know, smart people like Jaguar Wright were saying, no, it's game. He's playing crazy. He's not crazy. He's acting. And she said it was one of the strongest acting roles he's ever done in his life. And that makes sense if he's trying to survive, right? Think of the number of people who allegedly have been retired from the earth by certain people, allegedly, right? We don't see, but it's certainly possible that that happened, right? We can't be naive enough to think, oh no, that never happens. Sure it does especially if there's money and reputation and whatnot on the table, right? But anyway, back to grotesquerie. Where are my notes? Um, one of the more interesting things that happened in the series, it's about, you know, Niecy Nash is a lady cop. Air Force High 2.0. I'm blessed that you have the time to come to my humble live. I know you're always holding court with like nine women. And I'm always like, ah, oh, there's no room for me in there. <laughs> How are you in Florida, Air Force High 2.0? I hope you're okay. We've been seeing some really uh, devastating video. Um, you know, uh, it's a natural disaster. I feel like Florida is in a place where that happens often. Not that it should, but it does. And so the shenanigans, like getting rid of people's ability to be covered by insurance, and then also the governor allegedly denying having federal funds for natural disaster relief, well, it's ironic. But, you know, again, the local people voted for him. Him and his, <laughs> and his what is it, boots that are made for walking with the lifts and the heels. That's what they wanted. What can I say? That's their guy. We don't have the perfect governor in California, but hey, you know, they like it, I love it. And now everyone is dealing with consequences, right? Mm. Devastating. There and I think North Carolina, we've seen some really wild out, some really outrageous videos. Jess has joined us, J Laws 1922. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like anyone has watched Grotesquery. I only watched one episode. I was trying to watch Monsters, but I couldn't, I kept starting it and I couldn't get into it, right? I'm just getting some CoverGirl Vitalist Go Glow in the shade Sunkissed on the high points for a little glow. Um... But I have to say, I'm really excited about the wardrobe, the hair, the makeup that they did on Niecy Nash. It's appropriate, it's flattering. They put her in a, you know, all the principal colors, not red, but black and white. She's in a beautiful, like flowy kind of raincoat and then a black dress that has a little kiss of, you know, grown woman cleavage. And that's I feel like that's her signature. And then, you know, all the people who were complaining about her having a grown woman's body on Rookie Feds, it's like, have you watched her her entire career? 
Soul Man, to Reno 911, she always serves body. So what's the problem? Unless it was about, you know, you look at the experience of someone like Damon Wayans on Lethal Weapon, where he had a colleague, according to Variety, who wanted to be number one on the call sheet and wanted to get rid of Damon. And shrapnel in the back of Damon's head and all this craziness, allegedly. But, you know, was on a campaign... The guy directed some episodes and it, it, it got so bad that, in my opinion, they couldn't have both the number one and the number two characters on the call sheet on set together, right? They had to use a body double and kind of work it so that they could get the lines out but not have them around each other because number two was getting after number one because he wanted to be number one on the call sheet the show was popular, he was popular, but he was doing underhanded things. And, you know, I am not naive enough, especially after a couple of election cycles where we've obviously had interference from bots and bot farms. It's not unbelievable that someone could hire a bot farm to say certain things about Harry and Meghan, about the fact that Nisi Nash will sometimes have cleavage. Are you going to cry in your cornflakes? She's always had that. But that, I saw it again and again on Facebook about her. And it was weird, right? Hopefully nobody starts that nonsense with grotesquery. But it seems well written. It seems well done. It's beautifully shot. Shout out to Max Winkler, Henry Winkler's son, the Fonz. Beautiful job. I don't know if he directed every episode. I have to look closer at the credits. But one of the more interesting dynamics on the show was that there is a character that they call Nurse Red. She's an actress whose name I don't know, but I think she's famous from some other project. And she is in charge of a medical care facility where Nisi Nash's husband on the show, played by Courtney Vance, is involved. Not to give story away but just to say that old girl nurse red seems to be stepping to Nisi talking like oh you should be more attentive to your husband and so Nisi Nash has to be like yes my husband right and at one point nurse red is you know just waxing poetic but to be a little vulgar, gushing over Courtney Vance's character and that he's a man of letters and blah, blah, blah. And she says, listen to this nonsense. Says this, Nurse Red says to Niecy Nash's character, oh, when it comes to your husband, I get a shiver in my quiver just thinking about it. Just thinking about her husband being a professor or writer or whatever he is. The disrespect, right? This is coming for Niecy Nash's man. And Niecy Nash has to like get up and be like, that, 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 nope, mm -mm. worth a watch, my friends. And so well done, so well scripted. Um, you know, it's got a lot of like juiciness. If you're a woman in the workplace, if you're a mom, if you have grown kids, if you are watching TV, it has these really like human moments in it, but it actually has some really um, juicy analysis about the state of the world and, you know, where we may have lost our connection to traditional religion and that, you know, there's a lot more energy into belonging to and behaving in cults. We're certainly seeing it in this election, you know, good and evil. And, you know, feeling like, and I think a lot of us do feel like this, that there's horrible news and cataclysms at every turn and everything now feels personal to everybody, right? The natural disasters in Florida, car accidents, crimes, all the people I see crawling out of the subway in New York. Like, what is going on? Like, you know, if you can get some peace and get on, you know, this platform and do some makeup, you're you're a lucky duck because it's hard out there in these streets. Do I have any foundation? 
I might not, but I do have powder foundation. I'm out of practice. I haven't done my makeup on camera in a long time, and I've been trying to go live and TikTok shop, and then I get scolded and <laughs> kicked off. Techno Pirate was here. I got kicked off live because I didn't spend every moment talking about products, so I decided to just leave all that aside, Christo, Salva Bote, Olivia, Wit you're the thou. Oh, hi. <laughs> MX Whitley, Mr. and Mrs. B, Armored Goddess, Jade Crockett, FD, J Laws 1922. Um, you know, and just talk through this very juicy show. I watched it twice. I feel like there's good narrative drive. Um, again, when I've tried to start Monsters, it just, it's just, you know, that first scene. I get to, I guess, near the end of it, and I can't take it anymore. Like, I just, it frustrates me. Like, I get it, it's establishing character, and, you know, I like the actors, I like the clips I've seen, but I just, it didn't hold my interest to kind of watch it through, and I want to, because I don't think it's that many episodes. Um, you know, this is a... NYX Golden Powder Foundation, all right? I'm trying to use up my stash, and because I use it when I'm out and about and I have sunscreen on, I kind of hard panned it, so if you see me scrubbing in it, it's to get rid of that hard pan surface, where if you get oil and, you know, stuff on your powders, sometimes they can stiffen up, and I don't want to just take my fingernail and scrape it but I do want to try to use it all up, right? Mm. But yeah, grotesquerie, it seems like it's a, a serial criminal. I'll put it like that. And it seems like the writing has something to say about, you know, this moment in our culture. I think it's a, a, a kind of modern, small town, contemporary-ish, because there's cell phones, but there's a, an element to it that seems very timeless, like trapped in time, right? In, in the sort of medical facility and even in this town. And, you know, even the way that the show has an aspect of The Walking Dead in terms of how, you know, it seems like unhoused criminals, right? That's two different concepts. People who are unhoused or at least are roaming the street trying to keep Niecy Nash from driving down the street, that there's some kind of commentary about, you know, when people function in a society, but not in a constructive way, how things can go, things can go left. They can get dangerous, right? If you're just trying to drive down the street, you know, you can certainly relate to that living in Los Angeles, right? You can't, <laughs> you can't. You can't tool down the street. You can't think if you look both ways, it's all good. There could be someone on a bicycle or one of those <sighs> forsaken scooter things or just people who are, they're wanting to throw their car door open, all the way open in tight traffic when one lane is taken up because there's some, some kind of construction dumpster. Like, people are not mindful. And that sort of feeling of menace from having to navigate the streets in your car as a woman, but as someone who's driving, it can just be really, really treacherous. Um, there's, like, moments that I'm remembering in the show that I felt very involved. I felt like it was relatable. Um, you know, that there are women of different sizes in the show, that it's not just everybody this big, which can be a real Hollywood um, default. No, everybody's represented, like body size wise. And, you know, it's, it's beautiful to see. It's inclusive that way. Um, you know, diverse police Everybody that has been presented who is involved with the church so far is, am I assuming that they're Catholic or is it Catholic because it's a nun? I think they're Catholic, but 
you know, anyone who has <laughs> survived Catholic school, you will see, you know, some familiar things and have some cultural touchstones that will feel familiar and also worth thinking about. You know, having grown up in a mafia area and been in Catholic school and Catholic church, you know, there's a concept called hot priest that we know well, right? When you're in an all girls religious school and you're going to chapel four times a day and the only man that comes on the scene is the priest that gives the Eucharist. You won't be looking just at the same time as you're looking through the Bible for all the naughty parts. Can I get a witness? Put a one in the chat if that was you in private girls' school. Dusa is here. Wacky Curls is here. My Lizzie King. But, you know, I can't tell you what is to come in the series Grotesquery. I enjoyed it. I felt like there were some things. It wasn't just plot and character. There were some, you know, actory moments where people are establishing the character and the character arc and all of that. But there were definitely some incredibly well-written, insightful lines, some incredibly beautiful costumes, cinematography, scenes. Um, one thing that I will say bumped me at the end of the episode, and this is episode one, is that, you know, you've got that eerie feeling, you're anticipating what happens with the criminal and more crime. And the sound design was kind of religious music, like that kind of like Catholic, it wasn't exactly Gregorian chant, but that kind of ah, kind of high pitched voices singing. It could have been children, it could have been young boys singing, right? If you if you are familiar with Prime Suspect 3, which is one of my favorite episodes from, I guess you'd call it a mini series, the UK version, that that entire series was bookended by that kind of singing, young boys singing, because they were victims in that series. This sounded more to me like women singing. And it bumped me in the sense that my feeling, you know, from shadowy figures running around, my feeling is that the perps in this show, even though they say man or woman, right, the Certain characters refer to the perp as man or woman, but we know it's unlikely to be a woman, but I could be surprised. But why wasn't it the voice of men singing Gregorian chant? Hmm? Ryan Murphy? Hmm? Max Winkler? Why have either prepubescent boys or women singing the ah, kind of Scary music at the end of the show. We say it every day on this app. When it comes to crime and risk and victimizing women, children, families, it's not women. 99% of the time, it's men. Is that because men, a lot of them are producers on the show. They didn't want to use the men singing, right? Could you imagine like the perp in, you know, whether it's Donald Trump's favorite Hannibal Lecter or Mods Mickelson playing Hannibal Lecter or, you know, Freddy Krueger or Jason singing. It would be a man's voice singing, not a woman's voice and not a pre prepubescent boy or girl. So the fact that they seem to use a woman's chorus in that sound design bumped me that's my opinion right getting into this eyeshadow palette two-faced natural eyes right we use this powder foundation to set we actually used it's a rarity eyeshadow primer from milani and then we're going to get into this but you know I enjoyed it. It gave me a lot to think about Brandy McDonald, Royal Queen, Royal Queen Bia. Is it Bia who's on tour with Nicki Minaj? Um, <laughs> there's just a lot of juice and inspiration in that one episode. And I'm eager to 
watch the other episodes. I haven't done so yet. I thought I would step on the scene here and do a little makeup and get my thoughts out, right? I would love to know what you think. If you have or if you ever, um, you know, if you ever are able to watch the episodes, like what it what it inspires in you, what it makes you think. And I, you know, I, I quite like it because, you know, obviously we watch a lot of thriller, a lot of crime show, and we have just culturally, it's a mainstay of television and film, but for there to be, you know, a new take, enough of a difference that you don't come into it feeling like, oh, uh, uh, I know where this is going. I will say that there are tropes in the series that feel familiar in terms of like, you know, it's the unsub business, like having a manifesto, having a, you know, a serialized modus operandi. But, you know, obviously this, this criminal is not gonna stop. And is it just a matter of time until he acts again or until he gets caught or they find out about other crimes he did? I need to know. I want to know. And, you know, it's, it's definitely mature viewing. Like, there's definitely, like, um, you know, it's grown folks programming. It's pretty uh, graphic. Not in terms of what's being done on the screen, but it's like the aftermath. They actually show it, they don't imply it. Um, and it's pretty gruesome. And, you know, by the name of the show, you get it. But again, this is not a, Ryan Murphy doesn't do slasher film. I feel like it's going to be a more intellectual, it's almost like the grotesqueness of the crimes and the grotesquery are a metaphor for our culture, our sort of current state of religion, current state of cult mindsets in the United States. And I think that that's a very interesting, um, it's an interesting take, right? It's not the same old, same old, right? There's a lot to love from Ryan Murphy. There's a lot to love on FX. There's a lot to love from Niecy Nash. And it's not it's not Dahmer 2.0, it's not exactly American Horror Story, but there are enough elements and kind of jumping off points that you will be solidly entertained. But I feel like whoever has, you know, written or improved the scripts, and is that Max Winkler? I don't know the names of the writers. I assume Ryan Murphy was involved in the writing if, if he did or didn't author the scripts himself, but himself, themself, himself, let me know if you know, but I'm excited, I'm excited to see more from the show, because it held my attention, and again, it's rare that I watch things twice, it got me out of my <laughs> steady um, monitoring of the royal family drama, you know, basically, I had to go find something else to watch because ain't nothing happening, right? The same old stale wannabe critiques of Harry and Meghan who are flying around the world helping people. But, you know, they're rehashing old business from 2018 and 2020 and all this. And they're supposed to be responsible for people having cancer and Kate can't work because she's got cancer, but look at look at Sarah Ferguson all over the world, film festival after film festival, going here, going there, going to New York, and she's got cancer for the third time, so it doesn't add up, right? Yes. Is it cancer or preventative chemo? Because the articles keep conflating the two. But you don't hear you don't hear Sarah Ferguson saying I'm not going to that festival or party because you know the c word uh uh ain't nothing gonna break her stride ain't no one gonna hold her down oh no Fergie's gonna keep on moving and you know 
respect due, but you know, certainly we're seeing a lot of talk about who I call Mr. Andrew. And that is in homage to the fact that there's all this talk of taking away Harry and Meghan's titles. Nobody is talking about taking away Mr. Andrew's title, so I did it for him. <laughs> there you go. I solved it. Don't worry. You're welcome, UK. All right, you guys can't figure that one out. All right, people who are actually liable for things, who pay millions. Nobody's discussing taking away his title. Oh no, just the black lady and her husband. Mm. And what's crazy is that, you know, they push all this news and information about the royals to us and then don't want to hear our brilliant insights and opinion. Well, guess what? That's not going to happen. You're going to hear about it. We got to hear about it. You're going to hear our answer. Right? Right. User 1787 is here. Louisville 007. Hi. Kara Shaw is here. Tamu. For You to Love is here. <laughs> Did you watch Grotesquerie? Anime Princess Yue is here. Did you watch Grotesquerie? Did anyone watch Grotesquerie? I need to know, because I, I enjoyed it, and I haven't sat through an entire episode. It's been a while. I, you know, I don't have all the time in the world, and I don't have all the interest in the world, right? If it doesn't hold my attention, it bumps me, I'm not going back. But I feel like once I stop being live, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and check it out. Right? It 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 spoke to me and it seems like it seems like it's for me. Right? It seems like, oh, this is a show that I could get some value out of. This is Brow and Eyeliner from Wet n Wild in the color Mink Brown. Let's get it on. FD is here. J Laws 1922. Did anyone watch Grotesquery? I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was well written and it had like a point to it. It didn't give away what's going to happen. There were kind of tropes in it that, you know, are familiar in terms of like crime scene and, um, you know, who's populating the police station and there being, you know, a chase and, you know, some darkness and uncertainty in terms of the way that the story is produced. But I didn't mind it. I thought it gave it gravity, right? No Travis Kelsey in episode one. So we're going to have to keep watching, right? We're going to have to keep an eye peeled, see if old boy can act. <laughs> can he play these days? Hmm. People are raising questions. But, you know, what a gift to be able to act in a series with Emmy winner Niecy Nash. And I, you know, I don't know top of mind what awards Courtney Vance has won I'm sure he has I just I'm not a I'm I, I feel like I'm more familiar with his wife's work than I am with his but if you happen to know please let me know and for a long time honestly I was like Courtney Vance Don Cheadle Courtney Vance Don Cheadle I feel like Courtney Vance is more built and Don Cheadle seems more slender. And Courtney Vance is more of a kind of like African-American preacher cadence. And I have to say, like when he acts, you can feel his voice, right? You can feel his emotional state. And surprisingly, another person in that production who has that not that he talks when I see him, but when I've run into, you know, Ryan Murphy on the Paramount lot, you know, it was like raining. He's wearing a hoodie and carrying a laptop. And I was like, oh, it's Ryan Murphy. You feel his presence. He has a lot of like riz 
and it's a it's a little intimidating I have to say um but it's interesting because sometimes you know certain showrunners you really wouldn't know who they are if it weren't for their behavior right you wouldn't know their face you wouldn't know that's their role if it wasn't made clear to you so yes i'm using this color icon <laughs> what is it brow and eyeliner as lip liner because it's not orange on me and i'm you know i spent the morning experimenting with some different contour sticks and whatnot that were just purely orange on me and i guess they're just not for people of my complexion because i'm like how can i sail around with orange smears on my face and you know then you put on sunscreen and like rub it in so it doesn't look crazy as you go do your errands but this is a nice cool brown it gives you a nice cool brown line and I guess I can use the end of a brush to like blend out that line before I add a lip color Robin is here. Melly is here. Gilberto Galindo, 694. Oh, yes. My friend. Um, let's see. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about what's going to happen in this show. I will get to watching Monsters. And, you know, again, I like a couple of the actors very, very much. And I'm curious. It's just that, I don't know. I've seen some clips. I kind of, I think we all know kind of what happens in the story, but, you know, the execution is going to be interesting. The drama that you can feel. But back to grotesquery, there were definitely moments in the show that moved me and brought me to an emotional place. And, you know, whether it's soap or drama or comedy, that a project can move me is I feel like that's the kind of like holy grail I'm looking for something that like moves me matters says something and that definitely gave me that I want to praise the use and as much as I crit criticize the vo vocals in the soundscape at the end of the episode I want to praise the use of Angie Stone um what song is that I wish I didn't it's one of her big hits but the vocal quality feels very like Nisi's character so I think that was a very strong choice and very well done I love the wardrobe choices I love the the stylistic um way it was shot um you know it it, it gives you satisfying thriller satisfying police procedural police procedural and satisfying horror series without being a gimmick or at least not yet right kittens is here faith Asa is here um i'm looking forward to whatever comes next and so this is our eyeliner brow and eyeliner Blend it out, right? It's giving you a little bit of that, what is it, MAC stone, kind of cool grayish look. And then we got a couple of crayons, lip crayons from LA Colors. That might be a lot of color. And then we, for comparison, we also got a lipstick from LA Colors. This is cutesy and cutesy looks like a nude it's on the pale side so I feel like cutesy is it's giving a little bit of honey love right if this is cutesy and this is honey love I think you can see there's a little bit of difference in hue but maybe I can put one on each half of my lips to see what's up um, Day is here, Salva Bote, but um, Flokith, <laughs> Floki the Great Dane, or F Loki the Great Dane, I'm not sure. So this is Honey Love, right? Um, 
you know, what we haven't seen yet is the actual relationship between Courtney Vance and Niecy Nash's characters. You know, we got kind of emotional scenes about Courtney from Niecy, and it was very well done. You know, I think there's a lot of discussion about marriage and family on this app, and I think that this show kind of scratches that itch and talks about that. And it, you know, it's very satisfying and it's very thoughtful, right? It's not like one of those like silly melodramas where we just walk in and then, you know, we assume that there's some cookie cutter relationship going on in a long-term marriage. I, you know, I appreciated the insights and I appreciated that they didn't try to dumb down the notion of what, you know, marriage is over the long term. And, you know, just the fact that <laughs> Niecy Nash has to defend her black husband from the clutches of the red-haired hospital worker. Mm. And it's sassy and I feel like there's a lot of good, like, cat fight stuff that happens in Ryan Murphy Pro Project. So if you like that kind of thing, it was well done and it was done in a way that, you know, makes sense. Like who doesn't have to put, when a loved one is in a hospital or similar institution, sometimes you gotta put people in their place. And Nisi did it and she did it well. <laughs> and, you know, I can't wait to get into further episodes, but I feel like it was definitely a highlight of my weekend to take a moment and listen and watch. But I have not yet seen Nick Chavez, the star of Monsters. But I feel like it's coming. And I know he's in it. I don't know exactly what he does or if he's a good guy or a bad guy. But, you know, looking forward to that. And just the fact that you know, right? There's been all that casting drama over on General Hospital. You know, General Hospital has gotten really exciting in the last few weeks. Um, you know, I think that Nick Chav Nick Chavez, Chavez, his character, Spencer Cassadine, may have been unalived. Maybe. Because sometimes in soap, unaliving is not final, right? So the suspense of will he or won't he ever return, right? Then the suspense of whatever's going on with the cast on that show, whatever's going on, you know, with different actors' careers and their money. I feel like with Nick Chavez, we're in the beautiful position of watching someone become like a star. I can remember watching certain scenes on General Hospital where, you know, he's arguing with his father on the show, Nicholas Cassadine, and he ate that actor up. Ate him up. And it was like, you lost a sense of like, is this General Hospital? What was the caliber of acting? You know, he came back at one point, the actor Nick Chavez, and he was all jacked. And it was like, whoa, <laughs> right? From being like a teen, a college student to being like, you know, grown in the way he looks in Monsters. But a really nice guy, a really good actor, you know, um, was in a an interracial romance with Grace, right? Which is interesting, right? And is, I think, aspirational. I think it's very much of the moment. And, you know, he just seems like a cool young talent. And I'm very excited that Ryan Murphy has given him these opportunities to be, you know, more to be more and do more and, you know, kind of let his, what is it? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, right? That there are opportunities for him to do that. Um, I feel like he helped bring General Hospital to a higher caliber in a, in a show where there's a lot of actors, a lot of history. You know, he stepped into one of the classic families and, and made his mark. 
and that they had the grace to let him step away. Maybe he'll be back, maybe he won't, maybe he'll be a recast, but definitely a star to watch. And I, you know, I don't say that often, but the way that I have for a long time been really excited about Channing Tatum, but yet I see the career of a Leonardo DiCaprio up here, whereas Leonardo DiCaprio can't dance. Leonardo DiCaprio shirtless is not a party. <laughs> and I love Leonardo DiCaprio, but it's like, you know, certain news events might create a gap that Channing Tatum can step into and maybe they need to do a project with Nick Chavez and Channing Tatum, you know. Anyway, Grotesquery has been exciting. General Hospital has been exciting. Monsters is exciting. I'm gonna watch it. And that's my report. I watched a little bit of streaming, y'all, and a little bit of traditional network TV. And I'm, you know, trying to tell you about something that I think might be worth your time. It was a delight that I actually started it. It held my interest and I watched it twice and I rarely do that. So, mm. stars, shall I give it a star rating? I would say for a first episode, I anticipate good things. I'll give it a cautious four out of five stars. The writing, the casting, the cinematography, the story, the meaning, all there. I'm anticipating more. I think it's definitely a watch. Definitely you can sample it for 15 minutes and see if it's for you. Um, but it made me write down lines, which is rare. It talked about, you know, things that are very kind of meaningful, religion, society, crime, marriage, healthcare, you know, and the amount of risk that we deal with dealing with these crazy people in daily life. Stay safe out there, stars, and stay safe in these internet streets, right? There's a lot of elements and a lot of different things at play, not all of it by individual real people. So that's definitely something to keep in mind as you deal with people trying to trigger you or even, you know, even in, in a live, like having names that if you say what their name is out loud, it might get you in trouble. So, you know, just stay, stay alive to risk and other possibilities um, Kara Shaw 440, hello. Um, mm, Puerto Rican flag heart basketball is here. And I think I've said hello to everyone. Brandon McDonald. Yes, Alejandra Arevalo. If you have a chance to see Grotesquery, let me know because I would love to know your opinion. This is half Honey Love, right? Honey Love is on this side, and then this LA Colors lipstick in the shade O Teddy that I thought was going to be much more like Velvet Teddy, but it's not. It's paler like Honey Love. Velvet Teddy is a little bit deeper. Um, but yeah, check it out. I'm going to get into some further episodes, if not watch the whole thing, and I'll be back with further discussions. Bravo to Nisi Nash, bravo to Ryan Murphy and Max Winkler and the team associated with Grotesquery. I think they did the damn thing and I think it's worth a watch. Four out of five stars, and I'll see you later, stars. Bye!